Hi folks, and welcome back to the Storm and Cellar. Today we'll take a look at an awesome video combat fighter aircraft game. When fighter computer games first came out, I had an F-15E which operated off of a five and a quarter inch floppy disk. The realism was terrible and it crashed every, after every shot. But today's video games are chock full of realism, great graphics, and the uh, choice of weapons and mission selection. Let's take a look at this game and I'll give you my thoughts. Dask is going to fill us in airborne, but we are flying a strike mission over Tehran into Marabad Airport. Elint has satellites. They think they know where Al Bashir is. This was kind of a hokey brief from the pilot to his WIZO or weapon systems officer on the way to the plane. A big change to a strike mission would definitely have been briefed up in the ready room or briefing room before the flight ever took off. The jets are there, but the crews were late. The F-A-18F uh, Super Hornets are on high alert, ready five, meaning they are at the cat or catapult, armed and fueled for the mission and need to be launched within five minutes. But the crew is down below flight deck and had a ways to go up to the jet. I'm really scratching my head on this one. Alert crews are generally sitting in the aircraft sometimes for hours. Sir, I need you to go ahead and tap the brakes. Okay, so the crew finally arrives to the aircraft and uh, are powering up the systems and checking all the control surfaces. It's pretty cool, by the way. Blast deflectors are up uh, during the launch, which prevents damage to the aft of the aircraft. Jet blasts have been measured up to a hurricane force winds of 100 knots. The carrier is uh, probably using advanced electromagnetic aircraft launching systems, or EMOLs, uh, rather than the older steam catapult. Seems like they stayed in afterburner for quite a long time after takeoff. Man, you really eat up the gas by doing that. But then the Super Hornets have a lot more fuel and range than other Hornet variants. Burner is usually only used for takeoff, supersonic flight, or combat scenarios. Engaging at Angel 6 or 6,000 feet. The Super Hornet's popping flare is probably against an AA-11 heat-seeking missile. Apparently, he took a hit in one of the engines from the missiles. By the way, the F-A-18 carries 30 flares and can be dispensed manually, semi-automatically, or automatically based on the threat situation.
Concentric circles with targeting information are the joint helmet mounted queuing system. The, uh, there's three ways for crews to receive aircraft and target information. The helmet, HUD, or heads up display, or the cockpit displays themselves. Here the Wizzo is scanning in the six clock and has an RWR warning light in his helmet. The pilot took an AIM-120 radar guided missile kill shot at the high aspect angle or head to head with the enemy aircraft. The uh, FA-18 has a 20 millimeter Gatling gun and fires four to 6,000 rounds per minute and carries a total of 412 rounds, which really gives the pilot just a few short bursts on the gun until he's Winchester or out of ammo. Three, flight of two coming up on your nine. After fighting their way through the air-to-air -air threat, they join up with Stripe Package, including Hornets and U.S. Air Force A-10 Warthogs, where they encounter bursts from AAA or anti-aircraft artillery en route to the target area. Switching to AGM-88 means they're using a HARM, or a high-speed anti-radiation missile, and they're going into the seed or suppression of enemy air defense missions, uh, where they detected three SAMs, or surface air missile sites, and destroyed them. By the way, the FA-18 Super Hornet has 11 hard points and gives it a myriad of weapons loadout, which means it can carry out the air-to-air, -air, seed, CAS, or close air support, and the air-to-ground bombing missions. Here the Super Hornet uh, lays the targets and that gave target guidance to the strike package. The strikers then use that buddy laser guidance to drop JDAMs which neutralize the targets. Finally, after a grueling mission, the Super Hornets are RTB, or return to base, or in this case, return to the carrier. The aircraft will do a carrier brake turn at about 800 feet over the boat, and usually start a descent to 600 feet. On the final, the pilot will start his landing descent and looks at what's called the lens for three green lights, which indicates proper glide slope. Once the pilot has that, he'll call the ball, and the LSO or landing systems officer will respond, Roger Ball, acknowledging clear to land. When the aircraft hits the deck, uh, the pilot will go full military power to ensure that if the arresting hook breaks or they miss one of the four wires, they can still take off. Hey, great mission and a cool fighter video game and very realistic. Hope this also helped you understand the Super Hornets a little better. 
By the way, when I spoke to a group of Naval Aviator students in uh, at uh, Pensacola this summer, all but one of the eight were shooting for Hornets after graduation uh, over the Joint Strike Fighter. I found that very interesting. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Share this with your friends to help the channel grow. Let me know what you think by leaving your comments below, especially my Navy uh, buds out there. Until next time, as with the Super Hornet, make sure all your takeoff and landings equal.